Hi, I'm George, and I thought as we're getting into holiday card season here, you know, Halloween cards, Christmas cards, I thought it would be a good idea to show you how to add fonts into Photoshop Elements. Now if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos, check out my channel for hundreds more Photoshop Elements videos, and take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. When you're designing a new holiday themed project, you're probably going to be using text in the project and you'll need to find those fonts for your text and you also want to add those fonts into Photoshop Elements. Now it's actually a very easy process to do. The trickiest part is just deciding on what you want to use in your project. Now of course that's going to depend upon all the other imagery you have in here, whatever it happens to be to match the feel and the style of that. But you also want to have a nice place to go and find fonts for free and then download those into your system. Let me show you where I like to go when I'm looking for new fonts for my Photoshop Elements projects. Here we go. I usually go to this site. It's called defont.com and all of the fonts on this site are free. Whether or not you can use those for commercial purposes, you need to look over here on the right hand side. So free for personal use, that's fine. So if you're making you know, cards for your family and friends, no problem at all for that. If you're looking for a font to use for commercial use, then make sure you look over here on the right hand side and some of these will say that it's free for commercial use or all rights included, things like that. So make sure you check that out if you want to be using it for commercial purposes. But all these fonts are free for personal use. Now to find a font, you first need to decide what it is you want to do. Let's say I wanted to find a font for a Halloween card. I want to have something kind of Halloween-y, kind of spooky, whatever. I'll start over here on the left hand side where it says fancy. These are all the different categories that these fonts fall into. Lots of different categories in here. Left hand side over here is cartoon, comic, and down here we have some eroded, distorted, destroy, horror. Here's fire and ice. Let's take a look at eroded right there. And some things in here that could be interesting, like this one could be interesting for a Halloween card. So you have some possible options down in here. Maybe the distorted might give you some better options as well. There's kind of a good one, that Dr. Glitch. That'd be good for a Halloween card. So pretty easy to find those. Let's say we're talking about doing a card for Christmas time, a Christmas card. So we'll just go over here a little bit. Now you'll find that a lot of the fonts here in the Gothic section, the Medieval and Celtic, both of those tend to work out very well for Christmas card type cards. You know, Viking, Celtic Garamond, there's a few in here that look very nice on a more traditional style Christmas card. So that's your more traditional stuff, your, your more standard. Even though these are very fancy typefaces, they're still a bit more traditional. Now, if you want to have something a bit modern, more lively, more interesting, then way over here on the right hand side, there's a whole section here called Holiday. And they tend to be themed for these holidays. There's Valentine's Day, Easter, Halloween, Christmas. Let's take a look at Halloween and see what this comes up. There we go, Scary Halloween. We actually did a project like this a few years ago where I took a regular typeface and distorted it for the drippy effect. And here it is already done. Same thing right down here. So a lot of good possibilities in here. And the kind of a messy one right there. So great options here to choose from. Now these kind of fonts are, these are called dingbat fonts. And each one of these is a different letter of the alphabet. You just type in that letter and you get a graphic. Great way to quickly bring in some easy imagery into your projects using those dingbat fonts. We'll look at that in just a second. To click Christmas over here, and here we go, here's some Christmas fonts. A bit more modern this time, some fun things like this Christmas lights up here, Christmas sparkle, little sparkles, there's a candy cane thing. We did a project like that as well, I think a couple of years ago on that candy cane. So a lot more modern style Christmas things, but more fun, kind of fun, easy things here to do. Again, there's some dingbat fonts down there. Let's look at those dingbat fonts quickly. There's a whole section here for dingbat fonts. Aliens, animals, there's fantastic, there's shapes, here's nature, here's kids, logos, music. Let's look at the music section. And these are just different fonts, different images that are inside of a typeface, just like using a regular font. You just type in the letter that corresponds with the actual image you want to use inside of your project. So you can see it's wide open on what you have available here for these projects. Let's just do a Halloween thing since that's kind of rapidly approaching here. I'll grab the Halloween holiday over here and we'll find something on here that's kind of fun to see what we have in here. First, look over here on the right hand side, free for personal use. One down below here, that's 100% free. So this can be used for commercial as well. This one, Phantom Fingers, 
That's 100% free. That can also be used for commercial projects as well. I think I'll grab one of those just so that there's no questions in here for use on YouTube. There we go. Here's a Halloween spider, 100% free. That's fine. Click on the download button right there and then download that onto your computer. I have a folder that I set up here called fonts and I download into this folder. I'll just choose save and that downloads that file. Now, whenever I download a file, I also want to make a note of where the file came from. Let me show you how I do that. I have a special little text file I use for keeping track of these things. Let me bring that one up. There we go. I just call it font downloads. And I'll put in a new line right here. Now, if you want more information about the font, instead of using the download button, click on the name of the font right there. This takes you into a site or into a page that has all the different letters shown in the typeface right there. And then I'll go up here to the top and I'll copy this off right here. This just tells me what the font was and where I found that. I'll copy this one. And then I'll bring my notepad back up again. There it is. And I'll paste that in right there. It's 100% free. I'm just going to copy it from here. And I'll stick that right there. So I have a note now of where I found that and what the rights are for that right there. Okay, that's all taken care of. So we have our font download. Now, if you don't know how to install the font, I'll be showing you here in just a second, but also on the home page, click on the logo on the home page right down here is how to install a font. They have more information in their help section, but it's actually very easy to do. Okay, let's get off of this site now. Now, first thing, when you're adding in new fonts into Photoshop Elements, make sure you close down the Photoshop Elements program because it reads the font list when it first starts up. So I'll just close this down. There we go. And here's my fonts folder. There it is. And there's the one that we just downloaded, HalloweenSpider.zip. So the first thing you need to do is to unzip this. I'm just going to right click on this one and I'll use the Windows zip to open this up. Click Extract All. It should go into a new folder with the same name as the name of the zip file, which is right there. And we'll choose Extract. There we go. And there's that file right there. Okay. This just takes us inside of that extracted folder. Now I'm in Windows, so all I need to do is just to Double click on the typeface right there, the font file, and it opens up the Windows font viewer right here. You can see examples of that. And there's an install button right there. Just click on install, and it's going to install this right into the font section inside of Windows. Okay, that's now been installed, and we can close this down. I'll now go ahead and open up Photoshop Elements. As it opens, it's going to read that fonts folder, and it will find that new font, and we'll then take a look at that. Okay, we're back inside of Photoshop Elements. I'm just going to select this typeface right there. Click this Halloween text and then come down to the type line. Now, if you know the name of your font, just select this like that and begin typing. This one is called Hall 1. So I'll just do an H-A-L and there it is, Halloween Spider. And there's the sample. So it finds it for you very easily. Just by beginning to type in the name, it will then find that for you. And there we go. There is that typeface. Of course, the coloration was added into my other lettering with this layer right here. I also have a drop shadow on that, which doesn't work out that well here. Let me just get rid of that drop shadow. There it is. And bring our colors back in. So there it is. That's how easy it is to add fonts into Photoshop Elements. It's simply a matter of finding the one you want, downloading it, double click on it to open it up in the Windows Font Viewer, and click on the Install button and then relaunch Photoshop Elements, and you'll then find that in your font list. Let me take a fast look here again. So there we are, there's the H's, and if I scroll up a little bit, there it is right inside of that font list. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share and subscribe. Check out my channel for hundreds more Photoshop Elements videos, and make sure you take a look at my complete training course. It's the best way to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, and the link for that is right down there in the description. All right, and I'll see you next time.